three nothing flatters us, but it leads us to Tammy, 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 uh, the man of the last ten minutes, the last fifteen minutes, <laughs> popping up to make it happen uh, when mm. a lot of nails were being bitten and and very worried. So Squawka again getting far too much love in our script. Uh, but Tammy Abraham has scored more Premier League goals than any other Chelsea player this season with five. Two goals in two minutes for the striker. Yeah, that'll help boost your stats. And then they followed up with Tammy Abraham scored 20 Premier League goals since the start of last season, at least 10 more than any other Chelsea player in that time. But here we are, Nick, in a, in a situation where we're rotating strikers, trying to figure out who should lead the line. Olivier Giroud... Uh, Lampard even talked about him that, you know, if you're going on form alone, Olivier should technically be playing, but there's balance and rotation that needs to happen. And Tammy came in, I guess, give me your eye test, a, a little bit of what you saw out of him. Yeah, there's a couple of important points I want to make here. The, the, the first is before Giroud scored four against Sevilla, Tammy was the informed striker. Okay. Like he was the one starting and contributing to the game. So, you know, let's, let's calm down. Tammy, it's not like Tammy just went off the boil. It was just that Giroud was playing better for a hot minute. And that, and that's okay. That's what you want. When we say competition, it's not that one competes with the other every week and then one always plays. <laughs> that's not what we say. Like that, It should be that they are fighting and Tammy will occasionally get the better of Giroud and Giroud will occasionally get the better of Tammy, right? So that's a really important point to make. Uh, the second is, I know that you were joking that the goals came in the last 15 minutes, but I actually thought Tammy had a pretty good game overall today. Uh, his hold-up play was immense. Uh, he was great at a first-pass distribution to someone like Pulisic or like Werner uh, or like Mason Mount. Uh, I thought that he he held the ball up relatively well against you know what is a pretty stout back line uh, for West Ham. And while the movement wasn't great in the first half, you definitely saw it pay off in the second half when uh, the midfield was able to shift around a little bit and create a little bit more and and bring West Ham's midfield out a little bit more so there's a bigger gap in between the midfield and their defense. So I, I would I would say that Tammy's overall game looked really good to me today. Uh, overall, obviously the goals are, I think, a credit to his work ethic and that last finish, Dan, was uh, was top class, uh, and I was really excited to see him get that. It was a great day out for Tammy, and he was rewarded for his tireless pursuit of a uh, of going back. I think ultimately way too deep, and I, I think that was more due to a structural problem with the way that the team was playing. You know, you saw Jorginho dropping significantly deep, you know, almost as a, a third center back at times, and you know that was not great because it was, you know, the one thing that West Ham was actually willing to let, let us have. They were willing to kind of they wanted to play with the ball. They, you know, no one really wanted to. Everyone was playing keep away. You know, no one really wanted to maintain possession for an extended period of time, and. I think what we saw is that eventually when we were able to wear down the West Ham side a little bit, when we were able to make the transition from Jorginho into Kovacic, add a little bit of stability into our ball possession, retaining the ball, moving it, you know, laterally, uh, you know, so that we could get it across and create some open lanes that Tammy was finding space. And, you know, I think credit to, you know, Mason, who really, uh, I think, helped manufacture the, the, the goal that Christian ultimately, I think, gets the uh, gets the assist for um, was was sublime. That was a really well placed ball into the back, and yeah, you know, I think Tammy was was finding himself in dangerous areas all day long. You know, I think that he, if you, we don't have a heat map here, but I would imagine it's it's pretty blistering orange or red right around the six yard box for the majority of the match. He was just even though he did drop deep, Brandon, he was finding himself in areas where he could support others but also be the the focal point, which I think is where maybe he's been questioned sometimes is, will he stand up and be the guy? And today he, without a question, was. Well, this is probably a good time to say, so I didn't get to watch the match, but I listened to it on the fifth stand app. And so I got a very different kind of picture being given to me than what you guys got to see too. So I think that that's interesting. So I was at Ben and Cundy doing doing the match kind of analysis and by the way they did a fantastic job uh, very fair by the way Cundy saying here it is we're under the pressure we're under the pressure goals coming they got to figure it out um thankfully it never came but when it came to Tammy um I would say that they spoke to him in hopeful terms you know that 
especially towards the end or especially on the counter, he's able to chest it down, right? Get it to Mason and, and be a focal point. He was able to, and then he continues his runs. And so I'd hear, you know, we get it out wide and, you know, Pulisic or whoever is trying to whip the ball in the box and, you know, Tammy is in and amongst it. And they kept speaking out there, hopeful that, you know, that, that Tammy was doing the right things and, and getting involved. And so it was like really good to hear, obviously. And now watching back highlights and things, you just see how, active he was and I think we talked about it a little bit in the in the preview you know Tammy's ready to go he, he knew he wanted to get involved he's gonna do everything he could to to do it and so again um you know getting to watch the highlights back and seeing that you know he took the third goal very confidently put his foot through it um and you know the second goal just having your head up and, and being aware being in a dangerous position sure enough it came to him so uh at the end of the day uh you know I everything I heard was you know, pretty good from from Tammy. Now, I think you can say, was it a perfect day for him? No. Did he give away possession? Yes. Did he lose the ball in possession? Yes. Is he a young striker learning? Yes. But you can stomach that stuff because it didn't cost us and he scored two goals at the end. So at the end of the day, uh, Tammy made the impact that striker needs to do. Uh, it, it is also kind of how you finish too, right? Like it, it's one, you know, how many times have we seen in the last couple of years, Chelsea get off to a strong start and then fade you know, and don't quite close it out. I mean, it was great to slam the door shut today. And I, right. and I credit Tammy for being available to do that. So, and based on the commentary, right? I think you guys would agree that if we don't score two, West Ham come back to score one. Yeah, we've seen that script play out. Exactly. <laughs> you know how that goes. Especially I mean, the way it was going almost the entire second half. You know, we saw that we had 20 some clearances, right? Like obviously West Ham didn't get a shot on goal, but it didn't mean they weren't creating the chances. They just didn't get it. And you just assume that eventually they get one.